This is definitely a helmet sport. Let's do a little check here. So I know that you call the bot. What did you call the bottom bracket again? The crank axle. The crank axle. Do you have a name for pedal spindles that's not pedal spindles? Pedal axles. They are. They're basically pedal axles, aren't they? And so that's what we're actually going to talk about today. So uh, last time I was out here riding with you, we worked on a little bit of braking. And one of the things we did to settle you as you were braking to get your braking to be more effective and more efficient was to get that back heel to drop a little bit. And it really made me realize that while I spend a lot of time talking about this in classes, I haven't worked a lot with you in terms of giving you a, like a really in-depth understanding of how how the pedal axles, we'll call them the pedal spindles, um, are meant to work. Okay, the, it's a really powerful tool, tool on the bicycle, and it's something that um, a lot of riders get wrong. And what I mean by that is we don't really think about what's happening at our foot base, but that is what translates all the way up through our riding, all the way up through our body, and a lot of students in my class say that, oh, I've, you know, I've read online or I've heard from other coaches that I should always drop my heels. And, you know, it's, there's, there's truth to the fact that we do want to be able to drop our heels, but it's situational. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about is like, how do, what is this tool? How does it work? And how can we use it to, to optimize our riding? What a lot of riders don't realize is there are instances where we actually want our feet to be completely level or we actually want the toe to be down a little bit. And this is something you're already doing fairly well in most circumstances, but it's something I want you to become aware of. I don't want you to overthink it, but I want you to become aware of it. So like when we created that awareness last time during our, during our braking drill where you needed to get that back heel to come down, essentially there you're, you were just a little bit higher with your heel than your toe and it was kind of mm. kicking you forward a little bit. So when we get somebody who's really on their toes, stopping without getting front foot rotation is almost impossible. Like they're gonna get front foot rotation, their shoulders get heavy. And it's a really unsettling feeling and it's not the way we want to be riding on the bike. That said, when I get riders who ride really deep into their heels all the time, it becomes a lot harder for them to use their human suspension. And if they're on a flatter trail and we're starting to generate lateral acceleration out of on like a, like a flatter berm trail, like we'll probably be on a little bit today, um, in those instances, what we're going to get is the bike is going to get away from us. So if our heels are down and the bike accelerates, We've got a problem in Houston, right? Like we're not mm -hmm. going to keep up with the acceleration of the bicycle. So in that instance, we're going to be driving the knee forward more and allowing the bicycle to accelerate and take us along with that acceleration. Now, when we get on really steep descents, I'm always talking about driving the knees forward to get traction. When we're on a flatter trail, we have to kind of like fight to, to get forward on the bike, right? On a steep pitch, generally we're braking. We don't have to fight to get forward. The bike is pulling us, like the, the terrain is pulling us into the bike. The point of all this is that there is no set it and forget it. Like we're not just trying to ride with dropped heels. We're not just trying to ride on our toes. We're trying to use this as an articulating space. So mm -hmm. when we're on flatter terrain, when, we're, when you're um, in pro probably off camber situations, things like that, you're gonna wanna really drive the knee over the toe, which is gonna bring that heel up. Right. Um, when you're on steeper ground or when you're braking hard, when there's mm -hmm. a lot of like resistance against the bicycle from the ground, you can drop the heels a little bit just to really like root into the ground. So having, I guess your heel position is, is that to get better traction or is that to keep your feet on the pedals? So on a steep pitch, that's a really good question. On a steep pitch, the ability to drop our heels transfers more weight into the back wheel. Okay, and that's really helpful on a steep pitch because on a steep pitch, if we're too much on our toes and we grab the brakes, we're going to get kind of pushed forward and we're going to lose mm -hmm. weight on the back, back wheel, right? Okay. Um, if the bike's accelerating out of a turn, we're going to want, we're going to want a lot of weight. Well, on a flatter turn, terrain, we're going to want a lot of weight on the front wheel because there isn't that natural uh, weight being put on the front wheel. So we're going to want to run. Uh, we're going to not want to just be standing on our heels. We're also going to learn some stuff about mobility and stability as it pertains to our foot stance on the bike. And I'm just gonna show you a couple really basic things out in the open before we get started. Okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a little riding. And I want you to just to start to kind of notice, like you did with your braking as you started to get that back heel to come down a little bit, that I want you to start noticing how the use of your feet over your bike really does come into play on the bike. I don't want you overthinking it when you're riding, but mm -hmm. like maybe when you're practicing your braking, practicing your steep descents, practicing your flat turns, starting to kind of really think about like, oh yeah, this I am doing something slightly different here because awareness around what you're doing, even if it's already correct, is really powerful. All right, so tricks on bike. Sorry to ruin your hair by having you put your helmet on. I know that was a big sacrifice, but uh, so first thing you're gonna do for me is you're gonna just go around and you're gonna come through just right in front of me here. 
and I just wanted to see like how deeply you can just squatting on your bike with your feet level. So you're going to go like basically feet at nine and three, and you're just going to show me that range of motion, like how deeply you can squat, like go as far as you can, sit out. Like yeah, I'm at the seat. Yep. There you go. Okay, cool. Okay. Now what I want you to do is to come back around and I want you to drop your heels as much as you can and I want you to squat for me. Okay. Okay. And I'll squat. How's that feel? A little janky. Yeah? What's going on? Um, Is it hard to squat with your heels dropped all the way? Yes, yes. And my weight feels like it's not centered anymore. Exactly. Your weight's not centered and you don't have the same range of motion. Right? Once, you're, once your heels drop all the way, you can't squat as much. Mm -hmm. And you can't get over the balls of your feet as well. Right? So you're not really over your bottom bracket as well. Mm -hmm. So you can really feel the difference in those positions. And what, what we'll notice when we look back at some of the video there is when you're squatting the first time, when you're not thinking about dropping your heels, your feet are actually articulating in a way that they have to in order to squat. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you just drop the heels, it's much harder to squat. Okay, so that's the first thing. There are limitations to how much heel drop we can have if we want our body to work correctly. And that's really the point of that. Now we're going to experiment with having too much toe drop. Okay. Ooh, okay. This is going to be, this is going to be pretty exciting. So I actually brought some props for this. What? Yeah. Um, I know you're strong, so I brought, I brought a prop that I think is, is going to hold up because we're gonna have some serious strength strength showdown here. You won't even be on your bike for this one. What? Yep. No bikes. Right. This is this is a this is gonna be a bike free drill. Alright. What? <laughs> okay. I thought you were kidding about using a chain. No, I'm not kidding at all about using a chain. I brought this because it's a lot stronger than a rope and I know you'd probably snap a rope in a tug of war with me. Alright. <laughs> All right, so okay. little little tug of war contest. Okay, so you're gotta, gonna you're gotta gonna, get my ground. Yeah, get your ground. Dig your, dig yourself and see. And you're digging you're digging a heel pocket in, right? I'm intim <laughs> I'm intimidating you. The intimidator. There you are. It's working. You're like a bull. <laughs> it's freaking me out. <laughs> All right, so let's just go ahead and lean in and give it give it give give a good pull. Like okay. Pull. There you go. Good. So. You feel like you've got some, some good tension there. This is a heavy chain. We've got it nice and straight. I think we might actually break it, right? Now dig that back heel in, dig that back heel in. So you can really feel like you're able to resist that, right? Yeah. Now, if I, if I try to play tug of war with you and I try to stand on these, so I have my left foot forward there. That's my favorite foot. Oh. But if I try to stand on these, now let's try it again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do my best here. Okay. Okay. So, so keep, keep pulling. Okay, keep going. Pull. This is definitely a helmet sport. Yeah, so that's actually about the, about the limit of what I can hold on to there. So try again. Like, I don't want to hurt you, but. <laughs> yeah. So just with my heels up that much. Yeah. You can pull me forward, right? Now, if I put my heels down and dig in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can pull you forward pretty easily, right? So that just goes to show like how much less stability I have when my heels are up even an inch, right? Yeah. So if I'm coming down fast down a down steep terrain and my feet are higher than sea level like they're not level as sea level or below the depth of sea level i'm going to actually be being pulled forward into my shoulders so really what we see in, in with those two drills is it's possible to have the heels down so much that we lose functional mobility of the body mm -hmm. and it's possible to have the toes down so much that we lose functional stability of the body all right now that we got the starty parted with some good uh, off bike drills you know a little tug of war and some really cool like bike yoga that you were demonstrating for us. Mm -hmm. Let's go ride some trails. Let's go, let's go hit some shallow berms where we're gonna get some good acceleration and feel how we're driving the knee forward and the heels maybe actually lifting a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably do some steep descents, see kind of what the foot placement looks like over the bike. And maybe, maybe a couple of stops just to round things out and really just feeling like the various places that are, that are useful to us um, as we optimize this movement. The control over this over this really unique bearing on the bicycle between that and the bottom bracket, that is what makes this the fastest vehicle in the world down a trail. It's faster than a dirt bike coming down a trail because on a dirt bike, we're stuck. And on a mountain bike, we're able to like create varying amounts of foot height offset to deal with corners and really get our front side body pointed in the direction we want to go. But we're also isolated from the terrain we're on. Remember, I think it was session one we did mm -hmm. where we went through the rolly bumps really fast. Yeah we were able to go through there really quickly because the bike can roll back and forth while our foot base remains constant.
So what you'll see, Linnea, like when you look back at the video is that like when you're moving into this, you're doing the correct thing. You're driving forward with your knees and then that's actually lifting the heels a little bit. Which would be problematic down here, but when you start to G out at the bottom here where it gets a, you get a sudden force, your heels are dropping, right? So you, you've already instinctively learned to use this. I just want to make you aware of the power of this sort of movement over the, over the pedal spindles mm -hmm. and also for our viewers just to kind of get an idea. Because I think one of the things that is, a, is difficult but also awesome about this sport is that there are really no held positions and there's like really no held moment. It's more that we're trying to stay in in positions that allow us to move dynamically to new positions. So we're always moving. Well, we just did braking pretty recently, and I think we discovered then that I wasn't dropping my heel quite enough. Really, I mean, like that idea of being able to like root down into the heels that made your braking more effective, that's very similar to the force that you're getting. Like when you're braking, that, that force is similar to the force you're feeling here when you move from steep ground into flatter ground. So here, if you were on your toes in this moment here, you'd get totally tossed, right? Yeah. So being able to root a little bit into the heels. I mean, we're not rooting so much in the heels that the energy is driving down through the heels, but we're rooting enough through the heels that the energy manifests in the balls of the feet, which is really like that. That is the foundation that we're standing on over our pedals and the balls of the feet. I got air on the first one. Sorry. You did. It was pretty, pretty like inadvertently, right? So you just got your hips back and that got, gave you a little bit of air. Go ahead and do another one though. Okay. Super relax, nudge forward and relax. Good. So like, I know you got a little bit of air on that first bump and you're like, oh, that wasn't quite perfect, but yeah. that's not what we're really here for. What I want you to see, like, as you look back at these videos is that most of the time you're like generally in a pretty neutral spot with your pedals. I mean, you're a pro rider and you're, you're doing that really well. And then sometimes you're going to see like when we're, we're stopping hard or in certain elements, like when there's going to be a lot of compression, you're dropping your heels slightly. And maybe when you're on a flatter trail that has like really rewarding bank turns, the heel might even be lifting a little bit as you drive the knee forward to support you as you accelerate out of the turn. What's next? All right, so next is, um, let's go do some steep descents, maybe a couple rapid stops. Take yes. it from there. Okay. All right. Okay, nicely done. Thank you. Let's go ahead and do another one. Are they supposed to be dropped? They're doing their, they're doing their job. I mean, my feet stayed yeah. on. Yeah, so here, what, what we can see here is that you drive forward at the knees, but you don't really come forward under the toes very much when you do that because you know you're coming down something steep, right? And then as you land, that heel drops, right? See that? Yeah, let so me try one more time. I'm just kind of curious. I felt like when I was coming in, I had a little back foot rotation. Is that bad? So, you know, here one of the things is we, we, don't, want, we don't want a lot of rotation on either foot too much because we're mm -hmm. gonna actually catch there. Like when I'm first training people to come down this, the first thing I look for is when they move forward, do they get front foot rotation? Because I don't want somebody to catch their pedal foot on that. Oh. Yeah, that would be really, really bad. Um, so you might have had a little bit of back foot rotation, but it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Okay, let me try again. It's funny, I don't even think about what my feet are doing. They just kind of Yeah, so like, stuff. I mean, you, and that's one of the things that makes you such a strong rider. Like your, your foot base, like if you watch in this video, what you're gonna see here is that your foot base remains level relative to sea level. And you can really see it there, like how that bottom bracket, that drivetrain system is working for you. And that's why you're not second guessing it. So one of the reasons that you take your, 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 what your feet are doing for granted is they're doing the right thing. And a lot of people just think like, oh, maybe I'm just not a good rider or whatever, because their feet aren't doing the right thing and they're getting pitched forward or they're too far behind their bike. And a lot of that kind of like, when people struggle on the bike, it can be as simple as looking at the foot base. I mean, in the teacher training I just did, when we saw something happen at somebody's shoulders, like somebody getting pushed through, mm -hmm. I was teaching the teachers just to scan their way down the body and eventually we end up at the feet and we see that almost all instability on the bike comes from mistakes made at the foot base. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to give you the most unshakable foundation we possibly can so that everything we build on top of it works even better. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so what you can see here as you come down is like there's not a, not, nothing too exciting happening here, which is good. So essentially your feet are, are basically level relative to sea level, and sometimes your heels are just very slightly dipped, and that's what we want, and you're not getting a lot, uh, your feet are level relative to one another, and then each foot is working really well over the pedal spindle. So like your, your feet, your foot game looks super, super healthy here. Really the only weakness that I've found so far is like when you do want to like slow down dramatically is again getting that back heel to root a little bit more. But other than that, um, it's all working really well. This is also good for you, you know, as you're giving riders feedback, like when you see something happening in the upper body, you remember to look down low in the body and see what's causing it. All right, so our last little thing we're gonna try here is just your, your braking drill, right? So we worked on this a while back when we were here in the park together last, and uh, just gonna do a few stops, kind of check out where your feet are and call it good for the day. Okay, this yeah. is a harder braking zone than we did. It's a little steeper braking zone, yeah, yeah. Good. This time I want you just to think about dropping both heels just a little bit more, just a tiny bit more. Let's okay. see what you get out of it. How did that feel? Uh, about the same. I'm not sure if I made a big enough improvement. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily know. I just wanted, I just wanted to have you feel it. So this is the time before. So essentially here, notice that your, your feet are, are, they're down enough. Like it's doing its job. I was just kind of trying to see if we could get a bit more kind of like traction out of dropping the heels a little bit. And you literally did just drop them very, very slightly. It's, they're still almost level, but they did come down a little bit, right? You could talk to Jason about getting some like dance moves going that would work on your. Ooh, that's you know. a good one. Yeah. Let's jiff that. Yeah, for sure. Too much? No, too it was much, good. It was good on the rear heels. Break. Yeah, you got a, a, a little extra back brake usage. But I actually like that. So, what I'm seeing here from two stops ago is even though, I mean, you went, you went faster that time, but yeah. notice here, like, there's just a little bit of, like, as you break, like, a little bit of, like, the upper body kind of like getting pushed just a little bit mm -hmm. and I felt like this time when you stopped like your body your upper body is is now the weight's moving into the pedals more and it's not moving over the top of your shoulders nice I like that that felt pretty good that looked really good actually that actually looked like an improvement yeah. but it's good I mean you're nice and balanced you're looking really good this is just something I wanted to create some awareness around so that you have kind of like yet one more tool, things to work on. Basically the idea of today was to just bring awareness to a part of your bike that you've probably never thought about before. And I haven't had to bring a lot of awareness to it because uh, you've been actually riding pretty well. But we discovered that some of this kind of like static nature over your, over your pedal spindle mm -hmm. um, comes from an injury you had before, yeah. right? And comes from trying to like not move that part of your body. So now just getting a bit more movement in there is going to be a good thing. For a lot of people, it's getting less movement, but hopefully that helps you out a little bit yes. and allows you to kind of like really articulate between driving forward at the knee and getting the hip to raise when you're snapping turns and being able to drop the heels a little bit when you're really going for aggressive braking on a steep descent. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to try and work on this in conjunction with the stuff that we practice for braking because it makes a lot of sense. And just now it felt a lot better yeah. to drop my heels. So yeah. they're in interconnected things for sure. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Well, right. thanks so much. All Great right. day. Till next time.